Greetings, everybody. You asked for it, and it is here. I can't believe it. The uh, The time has come. The premiere has arrived. This is season two of the Day Four Devotion podcast, Dan. I thought we would never live to see the day. Yes. Well, the the uh, se- season one was a long season, and it was Core 52, and it took us a long time to settle on the name for this one. And I'm going to let you tell everybody what the what the name of season two is. Well, it's still day four devotion, isn't it? I don't know. I was just trying to be clever. Well, that's I. I would I would shy away from that if I were you, brother. Um, uh, <laughs> Consider it done. Yeah, I don't. I look the the name of the podcast, the day four devotion. Uh, I mean, it's still going to be on Thursdays, uh, mostly depending on if we can get it done. And you know, once you cement the name, like like that's it. And it, it has. It's not that it's actually like in cement. We didn't have any cement ready. It has more to do with, uh, my ability to navigate to the settings where I would actually make those types of changes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's it, man. Plus, you know, I, all kinds of people I'm sure at this point are, are uh, searching for day four devotion. So this yeah, is going to be it. I'm, I'm still at the, uh, I'm still like logged in from the first time I ever logged into this program. And so, uh, if I ever get logged out, I guess that will be the demise of the That'll day be the devotion. end of the podcast. That's it'll, it. And it, then we'll be back to, to uh, tech talk Tuesdays. That's right. It'll be a, a brand new, a brand new gig on password recovery. Uh, <laughs> but look, we're, we're, you know, we're happy to, to keep going. I think that we've established something that has been, uh, beneficial and by beneficial, I mean, mutually beneficial. As yeah. At least for the I. two of us. Yeah. So, you know, you and I are uh, committed, I guess, to having these conversations. And if people want to listen in, well, you know, it's their lives. They can. That's deliver. right, man. Everybody <laughs> has to make these decisions. So uh, we don't have the guide of, of the core 52 book. And this is normally where we say, so we're on core, whatever. And uh, even as we've discussed what to do with this one, I guess uh, our core, if you will, or our central idea is, is Easter. Right, we're going to do yes. an Easter theme here, and uh, that only makes sense given the uh, the weekend that just went by. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, we we just want to talk. I, you know, we both did on Sunday. We went through uh, uh, the Book of Mark and and looking at the things that Jesus did and uh, the difference between having half a gospel and the full gospel. And so today, as we get ready to uh, devote, we're going. Not into Mark today, but we're going to a different gospel. We're in the book of Matthew today. That's right. And we're going to just kind of look at three uh, events surrounding, you know, Holy Week. Uh, mm-hmm. And the first one that we're going to look at is kind of a, I don't know, we got a Bible word on our hands here. We're going to look at the word of Hosanna. Mm. And this word comes up in Matthew 21, 9. And this, of course, is, you know, the the shout or the cry, if you will, that that occurs on what we know as Palm Sunday when Jesus mm-hmm. makes his triumphant entry into Jerusalem. And in Matthew 21, 9, it says, the crowds that went ahead of him and those that follow shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. And, you know, I mean, it's been really a theme of the podcast where we address these words that we, we say and that we use and we even sing. Mm -hmm. And then we kind of challenge them. What do they mean? And you know, it's funny when, when I was looking at this word and I was thinking about this word coming up to Easter and maybe because they're both H words. uh, I was thinking, I bet a lot of people sing and shout Hosanna in the very same way that they sing and shout hallelujah. That was exactly what I was thinking. As you were starting, I was thinking to myself, like, whatever he says here, my tack on is going to be with uh, with hallelujah, right? Because, and the funny thing is, is that... And what does hallelujah mean? Well, hallelujah means praise the Lord, but it's a second person command. And so that's the interesting thing with hallelujah, is that literally what you're saying, whether it is to yourself or others, is you... Praise the Lord. Hmm. That's why the the King James will sometimes translate it as praise ye the Lord. Right. Okay. Because hallelujah Hallelujah. is a command. And it's funny because as often as like 
you know, whether it's because you passed your driver's test or, you know, like that, you, you know, avoided tripping. or I don't know what it'd be like. How many times do we just frivolously say, hallelujah. I don't know why those are the, so random, the random examples I came up with, but that's just, that's where we are. But, you, but, you you know, know, that, but truthfully, that's probably the number one time I say hallelujah is when I almost trip. <laughs> But but don't or when you finally pass your driver's test, but yeah, or, or spill the know, iced tea or spill the ice. It's going to be something wildly specific. But that being said, when we're in, in situations where you know we we feel like we need rescue, or that we've just been rescued, I don't think we very often just go, "Huh, Hosanna." Well, and and actually, I'm just thinking here that as I've kind of gone off on the tangent of hallelujah, we kind of skipped explaining what Hosanna means. So I guess we should do that. And Hosanna is a, a cry uh, or exclamation, if you will, that just means save us. Or actually, there's a, a particle on that that implies a desperation and urgency. And mm-hmm. so it's probably better translated, save us now or save us please. Mm. But what they're doing is they're crying out to Jesus, uh, the, the Jewish people, and you know, they're under Roman oppression. They've been waiting for a savior. They've been waiting for a deliverer. And so of course they're identifying this in this Jesus. And so they cry out to him and, and very familiar thought for us as well. Save us, save me or save me now, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And Hosanna is an interesting word because it can, it's used in that way. That's what it is here is saying, you know, Hosanna, save us, son of David, you know, uh, come to our rescue. It's under Roman occupation. It's this call out for salvation. But Hosanna, while being used in that way, can also be used as a thanksgiving or a praise of the one who, Who saves? That's right. It's an adoration kind of thing where, you know, when they shout Hosanna to Jesus, it is a request to please save me, but it's also an acknowledgement that he is mighty to save, Mm -hmm. right? That they're calling out. And it's again, I'm not sure. I can't, I'm not going to make the statement that in the first instance where it's used, it's saying, save us, son of David, uh, identifying that Jesus from the line of David. Mm -hmm. Um, which again, even in that, like, I don't think that there was like a lot of people in the p- crowd on Palm Sunday who had like pocket genealogies of Jesus being like, oh, he's a descendant of David. I, I think those were quite popular during the time, but I'll have to check. Yeah, well, I think it was a bit, no, anyway, <laughs> <You know, laughs> they, were, they were using Palm Pilots then. That's, and that, uh, that was Palm Sunday after that's all. That's right. That's what I'm saying. That's <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm just so, helping you out. Yeah, I know. Everybody, everybody <laughs> definitely got that joke. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're coming unraveled oh, that's no. the true name oh and and look <laughs> save us yeah hosanna indeed <laughs> and this welcome to the new hosanna podcast you're mm, asking instead of, mm. of day four devotion uh or it could be like the off in the weeds podcast or yeah the, yeah gone off the rails anyway uh all that to say them shouting hosanna to the son of david probably had less to do with jesus actual genealogy and more to do with you know, they knew that it would be a, a son of David that was to be the Messiah. And, or even just like to rule like in the days of David, you know what I mean? To restore mm-hmm. that type of kingdom. And and again, Hosanna in the highest heaven. Like mm-hmm. this is a power thing in the heavenly realm. Somebody who's capable to overthrow with God's blessing, right? Because this was person, they weren't expecting the Messiah uh, the way they got him. Uh, but they were expecting uh, a Messiah Savior who had the power of God behind him. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, they were expecting a man that would come and restore the kingdom of Israel. Uh, but and, of course, they ended up getting much more than they bargained for. And it's interesting that you say that because they weren't getting the Messiah that they were expecting. And I wonder if that happens with us as well. Mm. You know, where, you know, we think that the Messiah that we're getting with the salvation that we need is just like, you know, I really need my marriage fixed and I need more money for my job and I want my kids to get along better and my in-laws to like me or, you know, whatever other thing and just think, okay, or this person is sick or this person's in trouble. And, you know, 
I need salvation. I need Jesus to come in and, and fix all of that. And God can help with that. In fact, he can do anything. He can certainly fix these things. And yet that's not the type of salvation that we actually require. Mm. It's what we'd like. But again, it's easy to look at the pages of scripture and say like they did not get it. And I'm glad there's no, you know, book of Daniel. That's my life. Because... Man, that's what would be on every page. It this guy be, just does not get it. It would be hard to compete with the other actual book of Daniel, for sure. It's true. It's true. Mine would not be as popular. No. I will no. openly admit you, that here in this You space. would be like on page 17, 18 of the Amazon uh, results. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> one, one star review. You may know him yeah. from the day four Unraveled podcast. Yeah. Do not recommend. <laughs> Do not recommend. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly, man. All right. That is it. Well, look, I recommend <laughs> I recommend that we move on to the, uh, All to right. the next. I think that's a good idea. So as we move on, we're going into Matthew 27, verse 22. And it says, What shall I do then with Jesus who is called the Messiah? Pilate asked. They all answered, Crucify him. Why? What crime has he committed? Asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, crucify him. Mm. And, you know, what we're hitting on today is, you know, the three, well, we always do three verses, kind of three core uh, events. See, that core thing is just still, it's, it's with me. It's going to stick. It's going to stick. But the reason that we are looking at the these words, like Hosanna first, and, you know, we certainly identify that Hosanna is something that we mm-hmm. still sing and shout to, to Jesus and do so appropriately, right? We mm-hmm. still say, Jesus, save us, because we're sinners in need of a Savior. We say, Hosanna to Jesus to praise and adore him as the true king. And yet, when we read the word crucify him, you think, well, I wouldn't say that. And and that's probably true. Um, and yet, I think it's important for us not to miss our role in the crucifixion and Mm -hmm. the reason for it. And I don't know that we should be so certain uh, that we do not say or have not said crucify him. Maybe not in those exact words, Mm -hmm. but uh, again, just going back to what you were just saying about him, you know, being the savior that we need, but not necessarily the savior that we always want. Right. And, you know, crucifixion is something that we, we kind of look at in the good Friday setting and, you know, coming around Easter, and certainly as we celebrate the Lord's Table, we're, we're reminded of it. We, we talk about it each week. And yet the idea of us being responsible, that it's my sin, right? That it was my cross. It was, you know, Barabbas's cross, the substitution. You know, we always talk about identifying with someone in the story. Mm. You identify with Barabbas. Yeah. Not Jesus. You're Barabbas. I'm Barabbas. And that's a tough take. Mm-hmm. But it's 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 true. You know, and the thing is, it's important for us to understand that and be reminded of that. I saw a clip this past week, and I wish I could remember the preacher's name. All I remember is he was Scottish, and I loved his accent. And But what he said was, you have to preach the cross to yourself every day Mm. because if you don't the day that you don't it slips into the cross and my good works right that the cross was necessary because it was your cross and what jesus does the cruci his crucifixion on the cross is what covers your sin and that's it yeah you can do everything you you can afterwards to try and earn it to try and make it worth it to do, you know, whatever. I was having a conversation with somebody about that this morning. And, you know, just like, you know, we're just going to try and do better, you know, just, just trying to do the best we can. And it's like, yeah, like we, we all want to live good lives, but not, not to earn out your salvation. It's a response. It's It's, not, it's already taken care of. Right. And I, and I said like the, the guilt is self-imposed. The guilt is from the enemy. You can't be, Give, you know, you can't be assigned 
the term guilty when the punishment's already been paid. And you've already been pardoned. Now, do we go on sinning that grace by, may abound by no means? For we died to sin. How could we stand to live in it any longer? But we have to understand this, uh, you know, the, the weight of our sin and the cause of the crucifixion, the cause of Jesus' death, and yet understand w- at the same time what the death of Jesus has brought about for us. Right. But but it, it's it's interesting, you know, we, we kind of go back and forth and, uh, you know, leading up to Easter, I was listening to, uh, I love the, the uh, worship group Shane and Shane. Mm-hmm. I would say probably, you know, the uh, the best kind of like worship duo until the day for devotion era. Right. And uh, it's uh, look at the fantastic, fantastic group, uh, a couple of guys there and they have this song called crucify him. And uh, again, just going in from Hosanna into crucify it. The way it starts is I sing Hosanna when I want it all. Then I crucify the son of God because he isn't who I always thought, not what I want, but what I needed. I sing how great and mighty is the king, just as long as he considers me high above every other thing, even his glory. Mm. And, you know, that's the idea, too. And it's both in like, hey, thanks, God, for the salvation. Now I'm doing my own thing. But there's also an arrogance and a like putting me over the sacrifice of Jesus in that thinking that you just described where, well, I still have to make sure I'm like super good and super good enough. And, you know, it's funny. I remember, uh, a, I guess you call him a friend, a friend of mine in high school. And, uh, you probably know even exactly where I'm going here, where he used to say to me and it used to bug me. And I, and I remember even then being like, well, that's not really how it works. Uh, he would, he would say, oh, well, this person, I don't think they're a very good Christian. And I'm like, well, okay, well, like that kind of misses it, doesn't it? Right. You know what I mean? Like it would almost be better. It would sound more pharisaical, but it would, it would really even be better to say, I don't think that's a very godly person. Right. Than a good Christian, because like the, the whole idea of this being a good Christian is that you have to be good enough to maintain your Christendom. Right. It's funny because similar, again, I was having a conversation this morning. It was very much in this vein. And this person was kind of trying to reconcile how they felt about an issue versus what a very well-known Bible teacher says about it. And he said, this is what I think. He said, but I know he's better. And I said to him, better at what? What's he better at? Yeah. And he's like, well, you know, like, and I was like, I don't, you know, like both sinners saved by grace. You know what I mean? And I kind of said like, look, I, there's Bible teachers who, You know, I don't know if I could say, here's the Bible teacher, I agree with everything that they say. But let's take anybody, you know, insert whatever name you like, Bible teacher. Like, I can fully acknowledge, like, I don't agree with this guy in this, and still acknowledge he's way smarter than I'll ever hope to be. And I wouldn't want to debate the subject with him in the room. But, you know, to say, like, well, I I, I can't think what I think because he's better. Right. Right? But again, what I love about this, too, is... We have to do something with Jesus. Right. And Pilate's question is one that we all have to ask. Okay. Mm -hmm. So whether you're calling out Hosanna or whether, you know, you're going, well, you know, living a life that says crucify him. Pilate asks, what shall I do then with Jesus who is called the Messiah? Mm. So either I have to also call him the Messiah. I also have to call out Hosanna. Or I just dismiss him. And what some people want to do is they want to kind of keep Jesus as their buddy. Like, oh, or like kind of like their cover charge. Like, I got to like get here. Like, here's my buddy Jesus. And Mm -hmm. he's useful to me right now. So we're kind of together. And then you get in this other setting and we're like, we're not really about that. And you're like, Jesus, go stand in the corner. And I'll let you know when I need you. Or Jesus, you know, he's kind of a moral teacher. or He's kind of a good guy. And you can't do that, right? You we have to, and you and the really the thing is too is you can't just ignore it. You can't just be like, well, I'm just not going to make a decision about Jesus. No, that as is we not oft- an option, as we often say, the devil owns the fence. That's right. 
That's right. Yeah, and and you have to you have to make a decision. You're right. And really, the, Hosanna and crucify him are your two options. Honestly, and, uh, on and, yeah. And the interesting thing is, is that the same voices called out both. Well, that's it. And again, I think that we have to, you know, you want to see yourself in the scripture. And I think that we do. And I think in certain instances, it's important that we do. But as you mentioned earlier, you know, you make sure that you uh, audition for the proper, proper role in right. the play, right? That, you know, y- you can, you can be in the crowd. You can be a crowd member number 18 that shouts Hosanna. And then you can be, you know, in your next scene, you're going to be still crowd member 18. You're going to be shouting crucify him. Mm. And, you know, and it doesn't matter if you're that, you know, person who is, is far from God, or if you're that Bible teacher that you don't want to debate, right? Like, oh, well, that guy, he's really good at God. Right. It's, it's a sinner in need of a savior. Mm -hmm. That's, that's who everybody is. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Well, we have, uh, Jesus entering in triumph. We have Jesus being sent to his crucifixion. And then now we are in Matthew uh, 28, and we're going to bring it home here with verses 5 and 6. And this is, you know, what we celebrated on the weekend, the resurrection. Uh, in verse 5, it says, The angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. There is so much in these short verses that I love, 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 love. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I love, I love that it was the the women there because, and this is this is part of of even like just God in His infinite wisdom, right? Like how He just does things backwards, He does things mm-hmm. upside down. Because like for people that are like, oh well, you know, they're just making it up. It's like if they were making it up, they wouldn't have used women's testimony. That's right. Because their their testimony just in the day, their testimony wasn't worth anything. Yeah, well, I know that's how you run your house as well, Dan. No, Let's okay. just admit it. Um, <laughs> um, we're gonna be getting offensive no. in season two here. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, <laughs> but he, I love it. He says to the women, and then you know how how often? Well, it's every encounter with an angel, pretty much. You know, do not be afraid. Mm-hmm. And like even just the words of Jesus, how many times did he say, you know, don't be afraid? I, I'm thinking just because it's fresh of uh with with Jairus's daughter right yeah he's like don't be afraid only believe only I just believe love that reassurance for you are looking for Jesus who is crucified he is not here he has risen I can just he picture them indeed I, can, I was gonna say I can just picture the women going he is risen indeed but you know that probably wasn't That's the thing right that did not happen no uh but again and and it's just this whole deal like it's almost matter of fact like he has risen just like he said Right. Like he said he was going to do this. Like, sure, you came looking for him here. Go ahead and take a peek. He's not here because he's risen. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, and, yeah. and that we have to do something with as well. That's right. Because there's so many reports. Like, so look at it like this. Nobody can deny the historical Jesus. Nobody's you, serious. You can try, but you look silly. Okay. Like anybody who's worth their salt. If they say Jesus wasn't even a real person, that's a non-starter because we're not dealing in the realm of reality. No. Okay. Um, What's debated is whether or not he's the son of God, whether or not he was resurrected from the grave. However, from historical accounts, from eyewitness accounts, that all, you know, historical evidences of ancient days are measured by, the resurrection of Jesus passes the test. There's so many accounts, so many non, you know, Jewish accounts, non-Christian accounts, people who have nothing to gain. I saw kind of a spoof video a little while ago, and actually I'll have to, I'll have to send it to you. Um, But it's, it's this, it's this skit of the disciples after Jesus, yeah, after Jesus uh, dies on the cross and they're making up this scheme as to what you know how they're going to pull off that they're they're going to make people look 
like like the you know Jesus rose from the dead, and they make up like the apostle John is having trouble with the plan because Peter's telling that, and he keeps saying, and then we're all gonna get murdered, and they're yeah. all like, oh yeah, and John's like, wait, wait, what do you like? What do you mean? He's like, well, you know, like they're gonna kill us for it. And like, why would we ever do that? Like, right. why would you die for it if it wasn't true? And again, we have these historical accounts, like whether you believe it or not. These eyewitnesses, these ones who were there, they went to they went to the grave for it. Absolutely. And and look, like once you I mean everybody has to make a decision, just like mm-hmm. just like Pilate, right? That's right. And so you can either you can embrace it and believe it and live it, uh, or you can deny it and oppose it. And and again, you don't you don't get to pick undecided. That is that is picking no. That that's it. You know, I know that we've rehearsed it a hundred times, but it is it, it goes back to it so often. It's just because such a good analogy or a good explanation. It goes back to C.S. Lewis's that he's either a liar or a lunatic or the Lord. That's right. And you and you have to pick. I like that he says enough of this patronizing nonsense of calling him a good teacher. He's either a liar who said he was the son of God and knew that he wasn't. Or he's a madman. He's on the same level as the man who claims to be a poached egg, right. which I love. Yes. Or he's the Lord. He said, so either he's a, a lunatic or something much worse, a devil from hell, or he is the Lord. And those are your only options. And if he is Lord, and I believe that he is, mm-hmm. and you claim him as Savior, you choose, you know, Hosanna over crucify. Not a big leap, mm-hmm. but I think it's a good one. Mm-hmm. Then, you know, the, we, we were talking about this before, you know, this, this happens where he is risen and it's at that point, I mean, nothing goes without saying, but it's almost as though like the great commission would go without saying in that if you've got good news, gospel, Mm -hmm. uh, like this, it's, it's not about like, Oh, do I share it? Do I not? It'd be impossible to contain that within yourself. Don't you think? That's right. Oh, look, when you've got like, if if you and I got together just now and I had something that is, I say to say something is below the resurrection of Jesus is also without saying, but like, I mean, I'm just saying like, I've got something that's way like, I don't know, like, but still good. Like, let's say, you know, my daughter plays volleyball. Okay. So she, she won her uh, first volleyball match for their school team on on Monday. I'm looking for an opportunity to share that, and I'll create it. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I don't need it to come up. I just say, hey, so Kyle had her first game there on Monday. And they won. And that's fine. That's, that's good. It's good news. It's, it's not – Jesus rising from the grave. Right. Good news. That's good news. And look, you know, when we, you and I spoke, the you know, after that happened, I was like, "Hey, this happened." I'm telling you, because I, I guess I just want to share it. Yeah, you don't, you don't contain. Look, if you've ever encountered a first time grandparent, ah, uh, okay, yes, there is no asking, "Would you like to see the photos?" You are right. seeing the photos. You that's are seeing right. every of the photos. Yes, that's right. right. I against mean, against your whether with your will or against your look, will, it, it, there's no way. Like you're gonna know the time and the conditions of the birth. You're gonna know mm-hmm. the name. You're gonna know the weight. You're gonna know the length. You're gonna have just more information than was ever desired or required, because right. they just can't contain it. Right, and with no regard for whether or not the other person is interested in it or not. That's right. Right, because it's just too good not to share. That's right. I didn't say, would you like to know about it? It's like, I am telling you about this. And man, Easter gives you that opportunity. It sure to does. Go tell, to go tell. And, so, and how could you not? And how could you not? How could you not? How could you not? Very good. Well, look, man, I think that's, uh, I think this is a very successful kickoff to the second season of Day 4 Devotion. And we trust as a result. You're going to go and tell your friend. Yes, that <laughs> that individual and would love to listen to the podcast. 
force them. That's the only way. Yeah, yeah. Find Whether it. they want to listen to it or not, you're just gonna cram it in their ears, man. Like if you're that's... driving, man. Especially if you're on a long, getting ready to go on a long trip, just put this on. And look, you if you like are the friend, half an hour. If you are the friend, you're listening to this now. Then I do sincerely apologize. I don't yeah. know why you shouldn't be friends with that person anymore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Hosanna. Let's uh, let's pray. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we pause and we acknowledge your goodness, Lord. We're grateful for laughter and joy. Uh, we're grateful for um, the opportunities that we have to have conversations like this one, Lord. And we're grateful for the Easter celebrations that just took place, the church services, the family meals. And I pray, Lord, that even as perhaps conversations continue throughout the week and people ask, how was your long weekend? How was your Easter? I pray that we would not miss the opportunity to share that we were able to celebrate and sing Hosanna in the highest to the son of David. Lord, we praise you. We acknowledge you. We command our own hearts. Hallelujah. That you are our great God and savior. And we just pray that you keep us in your care as we continue on in this life and attempt in our very best, Lord, to make you famous. All praise, glory, and honor be to your name. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, again, I think that season two is off to a raving success. And thank you for tuning in to this first episode on Easter. And if you are viewing this on Facebook or YouTube, you can't on the other platforms, maybe you could leave us a comment and tell us if you think that this Easter episode is excellent or not all it was cracked up to be. I don't get it. Yeah. We'll see you next time. Joke's on you. <laughs> <laughs>